Wow, I never thought I'd be able to hold my own heart in my own hand. Well, there you go. <laughs> and live to tell the tale. Hi guys and welcome, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can link your heart rate to a browser source and display it on your stream. I'm going to be doing this in Streamlabs OBS. I'm going to be using the Pulsoid app, which is an online app that you can pay for and get widgets for, and there's different designs for the heart rate monitor. And I'm also going to be using this thing here, the Wahoo ticker, which is a low energy 4.0 Bluetooth device, which straps around your heart. <laughs> I never thought I'd be getting my belly out on a video, but there you go. <laughs> Spooky season is upon us. Many people do want to have the heart rate monitor displaying on stream, particularly when you're playing new games like Phasmophobia and other scary games. Me personally, I'm going to be playing Alien Isolation. I'm going to be playing Deceit. I am going to be playing Phasmophobia, a number of other games on stream at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Feel free to check me out uh, and also ask me any questions if you've got any about this or any other streaming tips and hints. If you enjoyed this video and find it useful, give it a thumbs up. It definitely helps me. It helps the video uh, visibility. Uh, and also, if you want to see more videos, feel free to subscribe anyway. Let's get into it. So here's the kind of heart rate monitor. This particular widget here is a Phasmophobia design. It's a new design that's available from Pulsoid. Uh, and I'll show you that and exactly how to get it. Effectively, what I've got here is two different browser sources, one displaying numbers and one displaying my actual heartbeat. Um, 86, uh, that's actually quite low considering I'm recording YouTube videos. It can be quite stressful at times recording uh, videos, you know. So that's that's what it looks like. You can change the color threshold. And just to demonstrate exactly how this works, if I now start doing squats, because I've got the settings on the widget set that when it passes a threshold, it changes color. And then when it goes a little bit further, it changes color to red. I think it's 124. You can set the thresholds. Um, this is so weird. <laughs> set the thresholds. Um, maybe I've set the threshold a little bit too high here. When it gets to, I think, 120. Yeah, there you go. It goes red. Woo! You can set those thresholds when you're configuring the widget, and I'll show you exactly how you can do that on the Phasmophobia widget. Anyway, let's get into it. I'll just hide the browser source for now. Woo! <sighs> Right, okay, so what you want to do first and foremost, first you want, you want to be visiting pullside.net, set up an account, click the login button. You can log in with Twitch here using your Twitch credentials. There are other widgets available, other browser sources, so uh, this is just the one that I'm showing, pullside.net. It's very well established. They've got thousands and thousands of streamers that have used this, so... By logging in with your Twitch credentials, you essentially have created an account because all the information is pulled from your Twitch account. checklist here you want to be getting a heart rate monitor there's loads of different options that they've got and they list the top three here i guess these are affiliate links i've gone for the wahoo ticker well, let's just have a quick look at this for a second the actual physical heart rate monitoring devices that you're going to use here key thing to note here because i very nearly ended up buying um a garmin one um it needs to be it can't be ant plus only monitors and it does not support watches and bracelets including fitbits apple watches samsung gear etc i don't know why that's the case and i've not tested it maybe it does support those um but obviously you do it at your own risk if you've already got an apple watch then there's nothing to lose because you've already got the watch they recommend these ones here and they're the ones that are confirmed i went with the wahoo ticker i bought that for around about 40 pounds so probably about 40 to 50 us dollars the connection type is a ble which is bluetooth low energy monitors that are supported and, and all they do the devices they just simply send a tick to a bluetooth device in this case it's sending a tick from the device which just simply straps around my chest using a, an elastic strap like this. Clips on using a like a button clip like that. Clips on and then you'll see now and then there'll be a flash on top, which is when my heart will, will pulsate <laughs> when it starts to register. And that'll then send a, a signal to my mobile phone um, because I've set up the mobile phone apps as well. And I'll show the mobile phone apps on screen just now. Um, I've had absolutely no problems with this ticker setting it up whatsoever. And as I said, it was about £40. There are cheaper ones out there, but that was one of the cheapest. They do range in price. Some of them are at £80 and £90 uh, or more than £100 actually. The two apps that you want to be using are the Pulsoid app itself, which is an app that, that pulls the data from your phone 
into the Pulsoid app, which you can then use as a browser source, either online here or via your phones. And so you can actually set this up via your phone, the, the browser sources. Uh, probably not recommended though, because you'll be using a, a PC or a laptop to stream from. You might as well do it on a normal browser. Um, but you can at least link the ticker. You also need to download the Wahoo app, which allows you to download the latest firmware update for the actual device itself. Um, and that's that's the thing that you use to link the device to your phone in the first place. So essentially what's happening here is you've got a device pushing almost like dummy data about your heart to an application, the Wahoo application on your phone. The phone application then makes it available for basically allowed devices. Then when you go in the Pulsoid app, you select the device um, and, and you'll see that on screen now. You can essentially select the, ch the sensors, add new sensors. You can even rename the sensor as well. There's not really a lot of point in renaming it other, other than for vanity reasons, to be honest. I had absolutely no trouble setting this up. It literally was recognized, but I did need to make sure that my Bluetooth was turned on first. And I was able to connect to the device on my phone through Bluetooth. So now that you've set up an account with Pulsoid, you've updated the firmware on the ticker application uh, and you've linked the ticker by selecting that device. We then get to the point where we're on the Pulsoid.net um, web application here. And this is where really all the magic happens. It takes that data that you're pushing from here to your phone and through wireless or whatever from your phone up to the cloud uh, to this application here. And then this application creates a browser source and pushes it to your stream and pulls in the data from that. And then obviously redesigns that as whatever the widget design is. So install the mobile application. We've done that as part of the application, the Pulsoid application install, you'll need to confirm your email address and a copy pass as well. And that just allows the data to be pushed. Then we get to the, the fun part, which is creating the widgets themselves. We we'll just go on the widgets editor page here. There's a number of free widgets that are available. I think these ones here are free. You can see which ones are free by see, seeing the free counter above here. And then some of them have need a BRO plan. We just have a quick look at pricing for a second. These are the pricing plans. Uh, I went with the 499 one because I didn't need the saving and I only need it for October. It didn't make sense to pay it per month uh, for three months. So that gives you 999 for three months or it's 499 for a single month. So, so you just do whatever's best for you here. But once you've updated, updated to the BRO plan, it unlocks all the extra widgets here, including some pretty nice ones, a jack-o'-lantern here. This one here, uh, is that like a Doom one or something like that? And a number of others, but a very quick scroll through here. I quite like the pixel one here and this an actual heart design here. And they've also added some Phasmophobia ones here and then the Phasmophobia text. These are the actual widgets themselves. Uh, you choose a design. So now what we then need to do is to customize the design. So if I just quickly on this, uh, let's say the Phasmophobia one, I'm just gonna configure this like that. Browser source is the URL that you will use uh, to paste onto your Streamlabs OBS. Once you've pasted that as a browser source, then that will work as a normal browser source, pulling in all of this design information and also the ticker heart rate information as well, and then present it on stream as your heart rate monitor. But for now, we need to uh, edit this. We can choose to bin off different, on this particular widget, the design is to bin off different layers and you can change the colors. And these are the, the heart rates, uh, beats per minute. From zero to 94, I want it to be in gray colors and then uh, orange and then red. I'm actually short this. I think this is to add a new one. If I want to add a new one from 60 to 90, I would press the, press the plus button and I can then choose to align it. Save settings once you've done that. Once you've configured your widget and you've got it to exactly how you want to have it, you simply do copy the URL and we've got that on our clipboard ready to set up on Streamlabs OBS. Once we're in Streamlabs OBS, it's really, really simple to set this up. You simply want to click on the plus icon here next to your sources. We want to select a browser source, add source. We want to add a new source instead. You can, you can name this as well, like heart rate monitor. And then you might want to just give it a design name as well. So for me, uh, Phasmo, add the source. At the moment, that will just place a placeholder here. That placeholder is just the Streamlabs browser source image. It's just a placeholder image. Paste in your source into the URL section here. Being careful to not reveal the 
code there, which is sensitive information. That literally will pull the heart rate data from Pulsoid into the browser source. So anyone else will be able to display that if they can see it. Uh, if you're able to get my heart rate information, congratulations. <laughs> uh, there's some other settings here that you always get when you're adding browser sources, like local files. You can set the height and width in this section here. But you can also resize it anyway once you've clicked OK. Um, custom custom CSS information, you can do some custom CSS work on it. Uh, you can choose to shut down the source when not visible. We'll just press done on that. If you find that the heart rate monitor isn't actually appearing on here, what you then need to do is just make sure you go into your phone app on your telephone, on your cell phone, go into the Pulsoid app, click on the devices and tap the ticker device. That will then just refresh the ticker in the phone app. Uh, you can, I think you can close the app and it will still work. But if you find that it's not working, you can also just leave the app open on your phone. You can then just lock your phone and that will work as normal. So don't worry too much if you see that the heart rate monitor isn't appearing on screen. That normally means that you just need to make sure that the data is being pushed from the heart rate monitor on your chest to the device itself. Uh, and that the device is registering that. You can see it's getting pretty intense here, 96. We're in the yellow. <laughs> Final thing, I'm just gonna briefly show the heart rate monitor itself on screen. It's, it's not that uncomfortable to wear. It's just a very small device, probably it's smaller than the palm of your hand. Um, there's a battery pack on the side like that, and it just uses a, just a straightforward button clip to clip on onto that there. So that literally just clips into the side of it. Just like that. There's two sides of it. The strap can fully come off, so you can take both sides off. It's just a snap. It's pretty It's pretty well secured. You can also adjust the strap as well. I had to make it bigger, obviously, because I'm a big lad. So <laughs> you can adjust the uh, strap. So that it's quite a lot of, of reach in the strap, I would say. So there you have it. Hopefully you found this very useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Hope you have a really wonderful and fun Halloween using this on your stream. If you want to ask me any questions whatsoever, feel free to visit my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Um, and happy spooks. Take it easy.